Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome to Planet Zoo. We're back building a new habitat here in our sort of, you know, mid-range zoo here in, uh, in Planet Zoo. So uh, I wanted to do one of the new animals from the South American pack and uh, I'm a big fan of quite a few of them actually. I think the llamas are great, I think the anteaters are great, um, but I've, I'm a big fan at the moment of all the climbing animals in the game. Really enjoy building the climbing structures for them and a lot of the new pieces as well, lots of bamboo climbing and stuff. I thought this all really worked really well and also uh, smaller primates are really, uh, really great for, for smaller zoos because they're relatively easy to keep and they're really big crowd pleasers as well. So, uh, with that in mind, we're going to do a capuchin monkey habitat. Um, not really basing it on anything in particular, just kind of going with the flow. It's going to be a little bit similar to the red panda one, to be honest with you, that we have over here in its sort of scale and budget. Maybe a slightly higher budget, but again, I really want to get that sort of old versus new in here as well, so we're going to be trying to, uh, to make the most of that. It's going to be right here down the front of the zoo, one of the sort of key uh, newer habitats that we that they've put in uh, for people to come and see uh, and we're probably going to do some uh, some water feature down the front here but again keeping it very sort of uh, utilitarian like we have over here um, but yeah hopefully it'll be good okay so the uh, the water feature is in and I thought I'd stop here because a lot of people in the last video the uh, the red panda habitat were asking about how um, how this was done so I thought we'd go over a little bit of how to do these sort of concrete filled pools. Um, so first of all, you're just going to be putting your water in like you would normally, and it can be really messy. It doesn't have to be neat at all because you are going to cover all that up. Uh, but just using the terrain tool, uh, you're going to be making your water feature as usual, then you're going to be covering it up with this. Um, now it's not actually concrete, it's actually plaster pieces, uh, as you'll see here, a plaster wall panel. And there's one meter, two meter, four meter, depending on how much of a curve you want. I find the two meters usually enough. Uh, and basically what you're going to be doing is uh, taking a, a piece of the plaster like so. Um, and then duplicating it and using the, um, the, the angle snap, you want to just pop it off one angle like that. And then once it's on one angle, it's like a 15 degree angle, I think. Uh, yeah, so it's on a 15 degree angle, then you're going to bring it down to meet that corner and most likely you're going to want another one of those as well. And there is your basic shape for creating uh, these uh, these ponds or these pools. Then you're going to copy them uh, and move them around and then you're going to just very slightly put them on a curve and you're going to meet that back corner there when you're curving like so. Now, uh, con... I want to say concave curves like this, I guess, you know, so the curves on the interior of a pool are much easier to do because this area overlaps. Uh, occasionally, the, uh, the the thing will go the other way, though, like this, and then that's a little trickier because you get these little sort of triangles of space. So to deal with those, what you're going to do is just duplicate that piece, set it onto a very slight angle, and then pull it in to fill that gap. Uh, and it's not perfect, I mean, really, what you need to do to do it perfect is to bring both of these in at an angle, but it's really going to be quite tricky, that. And really, for what you're doing, the fact that this is going to be underwater, you'll find that there is more than good enough. So you'll see here, we've got the regular curve, but then on this side, uh, it's using that technique under here. And uh, I think that looks pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, from any angle really and then at some point you want to want some sort of slope in there for both helping staff get in and out and also if you know the, an ever animal does get in there it's going to be easy for them to to get up on a slope there uh, so again just using uh, basic uh, basic pieces there on angles to uh, to create that so i know a few people asking about that but that's how i do it that's how i make the sort of concrete pools uh, very common in zoos uh, you know very rare do you have sort of true natural water because this space always has to be very cleanable uh, drainable uh, you can add drains into here as well i haven't done it on this one actually but uh, a little drain wouldn't go amiss for that too right a, a little bit of a jump forward then here i've actually got a couple of the main buildings in uh, so what i want to do here really again is sort of show that old and new and show maybe like a slightly higher budget for the newer building um, but here we've got um, the beginnings of a, an older building that's very similar to the uh, the snow leopard habitat uh, but what I thought to do here was to sort of go the idea of this one was to sort of show an older building but then that's had like expansion on it to, to give uh, the leopard extra room and extra space and extra sort of welfare um, but I wanted to go an extra step further with that one so this time what I've done is taken this building that would originally have had sort of a path down the front here uh, and these being windows into a animal habitat 
uh, and basically said that well, the building has to stay we can't do anything with the building but what we can do is repurpose it so now rather than a path coming down the front here and these looking into windows uh, we've taken the glass out and this is actually going to be uh, more of a shelter for a larger open area space for a capuchin monkey so not necessarily that the same monkeys used to be in here this could have been purpose for sort of any animal you know like another big cat or something like that uh, years ago when sort of space wasn't really considered to be important and welfare of animals wasn't considered important but now the space has been reused um one of the one of the the uh, the ideas behind this at toronto zoo is you go in there's a relatively small space that used to be well over the years it's held all sorts of things including a snow leopard uh, but now it's used to keep the uh, peafowl in over the winter periods so normally the peafowl during the summer can uh, are open to to run all around um, but in the, keep them in the winter to keep the temperature down and otherwise the uh, the unit isn't actually used which is uh, which is really interesting so that was kind of what the idea was here you know, can take a completely different animal habitat at one point and then repurpose it for this so uh, we're stuck with the building because that's the kind of idea behind this that some of these buildings are listed but what we can do is repurpose it and eventually uh, kind of cover it up a little bit as well and keep the, uh, the actual guest facing area here much more interesting and more natural. Uh, talking of which I've used some of the new temple pieces here um, this probably looks a little bit high budget but if you just think of this as lots of formed concrete that's basically what this is going to be uh, these kind of temple style rocks these sort of stone structures are actually quite common in zoos because they're relatively cheap even though they look pretty good they are pretty much usually just formed concrete um, so this sort of stuff uh, you know lots of vines lots of trees uh, we're going to try and cover up the best of it uh, as possible uh, and this is actually just going to be uh, another sort of bedding area where the, uh, the monkeys can come and hang out but then there's going to be a couple of little viewing points here as well, but not loads. You know, obviously we don't want to uh, freak the monkeys out. So they're going to have this space that they can come to if they want to. Uh, but then also this is going to act as a bedding area as well. So they can get away from the guests if they feel the need. So not such a major jump forward this time, but I wanted to show you some of the uh, some of the other core sort of elements of this build. So one here, we've got some of these temple pieces. Again, you know, I'm not building a temple. This is, the, the, you know, that isn't the sort of build I'm doing here. What I'm trying to do is use these like they would be used as sort of concrete uh, blocks to sort of give the idea of temple ruins and sort of fill out a, uh, a habitat there as well. Um, down the front here, we've used this new bamboo fence. I like to try and use some of the new stuff if I can, just to kind of show it off in a build. So this is one of the new, uh, I think the only new fence actually for the South African pack. And then over here, um, I've uh, staggered this build here to uh, to kind of cover up the, uh, the the utilitarian sort of fencing that's needed with something nice here with a bit of uh, bamboo. So again, these are all new bamboo pieces and a little bit of a hedge. And then we'll do some foliage in here as well to try and get away from this. Uh, the idea behind these fences is that these will be hot wire. I haven't really got anything in the game that we can really create good looking hot wire with. So I'm using these fences as a sort of... Uh, temporary fix now and then over this side I've gone for more of a temple wall because this uh, eventually will be guest facing uh, this path will come round here and probably off down this way so I wanted this to look a little bit more uh, funky here and, and tie in with the with the uh, the viewing area here for the uh, for the monkeys um, other than that then the only thing we've done is a lean-to here that's been added onto the original building uh, but this is all just going to be for show um, so we're going to have this building come in here um, and then I'll actually set up probably here the actual entrance to the house as far as the get the keepers concerned but we've got a door here to show that if we need to we can uh, we can close off the animals uh, which is obviously a very important thing you need to do in real life you need to have these sort of sectional areas of habitats where you can close them off and move them away if they're not well or even if you just need them to sort of get out of the way while keepers do things to the habitats um so yeah next thing then i guess is climbing structures so the uh, the main main sort of chunk of the climbing structure is in now uh the little bit of electric fencing here just to kind of make sure this area they don't swim so all we have to do is make sure they, there's no way of them getting through to the sort of out the skirts here i think in real life probably these would need to be a little bit more secure these spots here and probably around here as well but you know we could take some slight liberties i've actually put the animals into the habitat now and they can't get out uh, if you see 
Um, they can't get out anywhere. They've got full range of all this space here, and it's a pretty good size for them as well. Uh, it's about double what they actually need, and there's just enough climbing structure. So uh, happy with how that's turned out, because I don't think it looks particularly too oversized here for this large group. These are something you're going to want a large group of. I think there's about 18 in here, so it's like six males and 12 females. Uh, but you can go up to the 30s, I think, with group size, and they're quite happy with it. So uh, that's fun. Um, the only thing I had to do was there was wooden posts here. They were climbable, so they were able to sort of climb up them and get them here. So I've just replaced those with some plaster posts. Um, but other than that, the main thing here we're looking at is the uh, the climbing structure. Uh, mostly using bamboo. If I can, again, it's new. We want to try and use out the new stuff as much as we can. I don't think it looks pretty funky. Uh, try to do something a little bit different uh, than we have over here. This is more sort of uh, plain wooden structures with uh, areas joining them. Uh, here I want to do a little bit something different. So we've used a little bit of rope here to kind of create some different sort of textures. And I think the rope works really well with the bamboo as well. Um, and then we've got areas across the temple ruins here. Obviously making sure there's a good space uh, between the edge of the highest points here and the walls. Again, probably in real life that would have to be even further away because they can. They are little jumpers. Uh, but as far as the game's concerned, that's okay. And I'm kind of happy with that. Um, these, these kind of builds, same with the Red Panda one, I think, they really start to pop when we get the foliage in. Uh, they still look a little bit bare bones, but once that foliage comes in, I think it really makes a huge difference. Okay, there's the majority of the foliage in. It needs to do little bits over here, I think, but overall, really happy with how this has turned out. Um, the only thing that I kind of had in my head that we weren't able to use is any bamboo. I really wanted to get like a, a big bamboo sheet along the back here that really covered that build, uh, but there's no bamboo within the sort of South American uh, area that these animals are comfortable with, and I want to try and keep it right as much as I can, and also keep it uh, you know is a, a little bit more accurate so we've gone for some uh, big palms here um, and then uh, a couple of other um, sort of palms that would be a little tricky to keep but then otherwise I've tried to keep it with stuff that would grow relatively simply in a temperate climate which is in Britain so lots of grasses and uh, ferns and things like that and then just at the back here a few different sort of uh, smaller leaf trees um, and overall I think that's pretty good they, they definitely draw your attention away from the build although you can still see it a little uh, but that was really kind of the idea I wanted to get across the fact that this is here and it was stuck with it so what can we do in front of it to really sort of uh, you know build that out. Uh, turned a few things around here to make sure there's a good distance from the edge of the build from all of this. Uh, obviously, you know, with the trees themselves, they can climb up. Again, probably, you know, this kind of space is probably a little on the small side to be really safe in real life, but again, we take some slight liberties with it being a video game. Uh, and then I put some uh, enrichment items around the place, and they and they do come and use this a bit, to be fair. I, I still think the game needs to up the amount of time that arboreal animals spend climbing um, they spend way too much time on the ground. If you look around here, they're all just kind of sat around in their own poop, basically. Just sort of sat around. I, you know, sleeping ones are fine, but um, also we've got these new sort of fern uh, grass-based, uh, sorry, leaf-based uh, sleeping pads that are really quite cool. So I've used a combination of those and the straw. I think they look really good. Um, but yeah, really, these ones sitting around here, they should be they should be sat up here. Like, it should be their, their, their sort of basic level. Their sort of, uh, you know, sort of resting state i suppose should be up on one of these and just hanging out rather than resting down on the ground so i would really like them to sort the numbers a little bit there you know we build all these awesome structures and like i say they do use them and sometimes you get four or five of them up here especially since this has been here although that is going moldy now because i don't think staff can get to it probably annoyingly um uh I don't even know if I can select it. Never mind, I'll sort that out later. But yeah, there's um, there's definitely a, a requirement for them to be spending more time up in the uh, in the things. I love how they back down off that one though. That looks really cute. <laughs> Uh, right, a couple more little finishing touches, I think. Finishing in this area, some guest-facing signage, and uh, I think we could say this one is probably done. Right, final one then. No mega changes here, really. Um, like I say, there's a little bit more work on the foliage. We've added some bamboo and these awesome uh, capuchin signs over here. I think that looks really nice to tell telling kiddies what's what's around the corner so to speak and then coming up we've got some of these awesome uh, signage uh, details from the uh, from the workshop this one's got a tv screen inside it so um you might not be able to see it but there is there is a tv screen hidden in there showing people all about the actual capuchin so when this path comes down 
uh, in the next episode we'll be able to do that uh, but yeah really happy that this one's turned out again um, maybe the budget's a little high on this one but I really wanted to get that idea of, um, of a more modern naturalistic look to a habitat compared to the old one that was sort of stuck with oh yeah added a few bits of bamboo in and out the windows here for them to help them get in and out uh, if they needed to uh, but otherwise that's been pretty good what do you want about milk okay i've got to go and get my son some milk uh that's lockdown for you i guess he's here with me all day every day so let's try and get this done while he's watching cartoons thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it until the next one be good